Hello, buddy, and welcome back to the All Right Podcast. Remember, it's not the best podcast, but it's not the worst podcast. It's just an All Right Podcast. And guys, before I get into this week's guest, I'm going to say that, guys, just go follow me on Instagram, you know, Twitter, and the likes of that. Just follow, subscribe, Ma. We just reached um, 2,000 listeners now as well, so that's an accomplishment for the channel. And, uh, yeah, so thanks very much for everybody out there that's following the podcast right now. But... I'm going to get to the guests right now that I asked here today. Um, Dean. Hello, Dean. How's it going, man? What's up? How's it going, Anthony? How are you? What's up, man? So do you want to explain a bit about yourself and we can for the, for the people that are watching? Well, yeah, 100%. My name is Dean Mulroney. I'm 23 years old. I live in the Drimna, the posh part. <laughs> the posh part of the Drimna. Yeah. Um, yeah, 23 out here now at the minute. Loving quarantine, Anthony. Loving quarantine. Happy quarantine, everyone. <laughs> Happy quarantine. <laughs> mm. Congratulations, yeah. man. Yeah, the 2,000 listeners. Nice That's one. major. Yeah, it's, major. it's good. It's good for it only starting off. I only started doing it properly when I was in quarantine now. And uh, yeah. it's just something to pass the time to get me. Get all people yeah, like yourself. Yeah, to get get people like yourself because Dean, you're you're an actor and you're also a dancer as well. And yes, I, 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 before we start any of this, I want to say that I don't think you'll remember this, but a few years ago, um, I was up in Neilstown, um, <laughs> in Clondalkin, and uh, yeah. I, I that's where I met you. That was the first ever fucking yeah, time. Yeah, that was time. the first and, time. I remember I was I was still it was extra work or something. You just sit man on a table and we're all taking the piss uh while the fellas were fucking chewing and the guy I don't know his name, but the guy from Love Hate that played Mick in it, he was the director. Jimmy Smallhorn, yeah. Jimmy Smallhorn. Absolute Jimmy gentleman. Smallhorn. Of a man. Jimmy Smallhorn, yeah, an absolute gentleman of a man. He mm. was doing a movie called Four by Four and uh, we were up in Neilstown mm. and we went up and we were sitting in and it was actually a great idea because what Jimmy was doing was he was getting the likes of drug abusers and alcohol abusers and mm. making helping these people turn their lives around by showing them that there is something outside of all this. Mm. And that's something that kind of got me into acting as well when I was that age, around 13, 14, suspended from school, um, not doing too well, mm. family stuff at home. And acting for me, Jim, what, what Jimmy done, Mm. It's something that I feel like a lot of people should inspire to do is to take kids off the street with a certain talent or, or anything that they have or anything that they mm. know that they can just... It's not about the money either, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Regard making money or bringing numbers in. For me, man, it was just about me getting off the streets. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And that was the first opportunity that, that I had. And that was the force. It wasn't a major thing to get, mm. but like starting off with the career, but it was more like this is a stepping stone of oh, yeah. of what could happen next. Yeah. This is only the fourth step. Mm. And I feel like for people to take that fourth step is is hard. Like so Oh yeah. Especially was, when you don't know anything about it and you're only getting into it like Exactly, yeah. And you have some people that that like to go to the classes and all that kind of stuff. But maybe that class isn't for them. Mm. I had a mul multiple people say to me that we've had drama classes where we'd go and we'd sit and watch a movie. I was like, that's not a drama class. That's no. that's babysitting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's babysitting. So, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, that was yeah. a good old time. I didn't know if you'd remember or not, but I said I'd bring oh, it up anyway. Right. Um, yeah, but that's the most <laughs> time I met you, kind of, and then it kind of went after that day. But to that film as well, did that film ever get released? i never seen that. So did that film get, ever get premiered or released? Or um... I think that it was put into like the delight of a Dublin Film Festival. Mm. I think I think that's what what happened after that. I haven't been chatting to Jimmy as much. Um, I, Jimmy's the type of person that if you see him, he's not really a technology person. If you see him, yeah. he'd stand there and chat to you, mm. walking yeah. around Dame Street with his two dogs and all he is happy, <laughs> happy you. <laughs> That's the best way to be, man. That's the best way to be. It's um, squished with a barrel and love hate and then walks his Pomeranian around town. Hell, what other that. way would you want to be? <laughs> but um, for the likes of yourself, so you were saying you were getting, when you were 13 years of age, that's when you start uh, getting into acting. So that wasn't something that you've always been interested in, was it? Or was it just at the age of 13 you started getting interested in it? Believe it or not, I actually wanted to be a basketball player. Jesus. I actually wanted to be a basketball player and I'd done it for, I'd done it for four four or five years mm. I played for Oblitz just up there in Ninja Core. phenomenal team phenomenal team uh, we had alongside me I had Aidan Dawn I had Nathan Keach 
Mm. I had Lee Pujan, some of the lads that are uh, that are that I'm still mates with now today. Mm. And uh, what about them? Off. Have they have they, have they stick with basketball? Um, have they kept sticking? Lee, with them? Lee actually turned to MMA. Lee was we, Lee joined the basketball team a couple of years after me, mm. and then uh, he just fell in love with the UFC. And mm. he's looking. Lee is going to take take the MMA world by storm, hundred percent. Yeah, come here. For the likes of that, because um, I know you're real interested in the UFC, and there's there's one guy that I know for a fact, is, like I say on Facebook and so, that you share all of his posts and stuff, and uh, I, I know by the reactions when you're putting your videos up and all, when he's winning, uh, Conor McGregor, and I know for yeah. someone that wants to go and, out and do something from a guy that's from, like, Crumlin, you know, and he, he, he has this mindset and coming out, is that, yeah. did that kind of inspire you to do a lot more? Like, does he, does he inspire you to be a better person than you want to be like is it well there's obviously when you talk about McGregor you get the good sides and the bad sides mm. like Conor McGregor you mm. know what I mean now by say, any answers that I do say it's not me promoting anything that that McGregor has done I'm 100% mm. against all the allegations that came mm. out against him but one thing that I feel like that he does have to be respected for or doesn't have to be respected for but for people to be like fair enough when he was starting off and he wanted to join in the MMA game he was like there's no man for me to follow in the footsteps of. Yeah. Tell me, but boxing, you had the likes of Floyd Mayweather, you had the likes of Muhammad Ali, Mike mm. Tyson. Tell yeah. me, all yeah. these lads. So for somebody to literally just create a part, mm. if you like, mm. is something that I think is different level. Mm. Because there was nobody for him to go to his man. Like, if I wanted to be an actor, I'd go to my man, I'd be like, oh, yeah, I want to be like Tom Hanks, I want to be like Will Smith. The yeah. first time I actually got into acting was is I was on my way home from uh, boxing I was actually getting ready to join boxing and my 200 euro worth of boxing gear in the car Jesus. and then there was a review from Men in Black mm. and I love Will Smith man he yeah. just hits you from where you yeah. can do anything anything <laughs> so I just said to me ma I turned it up and I was like do you think I could be in a film with Will Smith and some people would think that's a bit of a major request yeah. or question to ask but my mum had 100% confidence in me and she said you can do whatever you like. Yeah. So I goes, right, but then we'll run back then and drop all this gear back then. <laughs> we'll <join laughs> you did back not, then. did you? <laughs> you did not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I goes, right. We got it out of the MMA shop just up there at the top of Henry Street. Oh and then God. we got onto Dame Street, or the Keys. We got onto the Keys. We were going down by Kilmain to go home. And I just got, right, well, then take this, right, will you? And we bring all this stuff back. <laughs> and oh she was like, no. And I was like, please. But we end up dropping all the, all the stuff back. Imagine the fella that yeah. went and done that sale. He got that sale and then he came back and goes, listen, I, I need that money back. I don't want to do this. Yeah. <laughs> and he's probably like, he'll be back in a week. For fuck's sake. We gave him commission. We did the amount of stuff we bought. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Fuck that. Uh, but but for, the likes, for the likes of that, and so when you uh, you said that you were trying to do boxing, well, what is it that you wanted to do with boxing? Why did you want? Because I, I joined boxing, I'd done it for like six months, took it off, and then I went and done it for nine months, and then went off again. I just keep losing interest and stuff. I need to find someone really fucking good yeah. at Boxing was just more for being fit and defending myself more than anything else. I didn't want to compete. So for the likes of you, what was, why did you want to join boxing? Um, I joined boxing because it was more of anything. As you said, it was more of like defending yourself. Do you know what I mean? So I wanted to do it for that. And all the lads were into it as well. So I felt like it was just time to switch up something and, and trying to do, just try, try something new. You know what I mean? Just keep, just keep everything refreshed. Um, but yeah, no, then I actually went down and just done the MMA. But then... I feel like if you want to stick at something that does need to be a certain love for it, and there's always going to be a time where the fire might die out a little bit. This is what I noticed. But I could be sitting there watching a movie and just be like, no, I'm getting up and I'm going to do something now. I'm going to go up, I'm going to either write a poem or I'm going to write a script or I'm just going to do something. I'm just going to get something out on paper, an idea. And I feel like that there's a lot of little inspirations around us. Like I know when I go to see a film in the cinema and I think it's really good, I'm like, oh my God, that reminded me of why I want to do it. That, it. that made me feel a certain way that reminded me of how I want to make people feel when they see me there or they see me on stage or when they see me on screen or anywhere like that. The whole thing I've, for me, I feel like is just, do you have the confidence in this and are you willing to put in the time? If you're willing to put in the time, anything can happen. Anything can happen. 
you know? I agree with Just you. going over and just grabbing it by your hands, man. But it's... Who said it? I think Dr. Dre said it. He said, uh, getting it's the easy part, mm. but holding on to it is the hard part. And that's what I feel like some people kind of get sucked into. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm. But it's all the same, man. Once you just have a drive for something and you have a love for something and you have 100% confidence that you're going to be able to go mm. and be the best at that that you can be, yeah. well, then there you go. And that's, I, that's all you need. I Belief is half right. the battle, man. Yeah, I think you know? right. And I, I noticed from you as well from posts that you put up and that, the way I'm talking to you now because we this is our first time ever actually probably fucking talking to each other. And yeah. um, if I share <laughs> if, I, if I fucking share something, you fucking you know I me, mean? you show support, and then if you share something, or you do something. I always like it as well. Do you get me? It's it's that back and forth, but it's the first ever time actually fucking talking fa- like like this. And uh, yeah. what I noticed from you as well is that you're a very positive person, um, as well. And uh, what I want to ask, right? And as I said already, if you don't want to mention anything, it's okay. But um, I I I want to know that. Because for me, I always wasn't a positive, confident person. And I think yeah. the likes of myself and yourself, that's where we'd kind of share that. Because um, where I want to ask, were you always this positive? Or was there a time where it, you were just like no confidence, no positivity at all? Yeah. Um, I feel like that regarding the likes of confidence is is something that... A lot of people that said to me, "Say do you have it, or you don't." Me, I don't really believe that. I feel that if you can, if you can actually go through, what well, what well, whatever you would go through on a daily basis, whether it be stuff at home or maybe maybe it's just now in quarantine. You know, there's, I've seen a lot of stuff sadly of 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 people, and quarantine has just gotten to, to them a bit too much. Um, regarding positivity for for like, even like now. I don't believe that obviously quarantine and coronavirus is, is a horrible thing that's going around. And that's something that's glamified all over social media. It's glamified all over or glamorized all over the news is all just bad stuff. So that's all we hear 24 seven. And me, I don't, I, I, I don't agree with that. I, I don't agree. So I won't sit there and watch the news every morning. I put up uh, every morning I'm in work. I put up a positivity quote on my Instagram. Check it out. I put up quotes, uh, quotes from anything, any positivity quotes or uh, self-motivation or anything like that. And you know what? If it inspires one person, I'm happy. But if it doesn't, I know it's going to inspire me. Because we're going through, as I said, with coronavirus now, this is a hard time we're going through, not only as like a nation, but as a world. Mm. So why would I want to put a negative influence on somebody else that's, that, that's going through this? They might not think that it's as easy as other people would like for myself i'm walking away mm. so i'm in work and yeah. then when i'm off the sun is out mm. do you know I mean so i actually don't mind quarantine people leave super value i'm like happy quarantine <laughs> happy quarantine <laughs> and that's it man and they always have a smile on their face after i say it to them mm. but regarding the positivity side of things i just don't feel like anybody should be putting anybody down at this moment in time mm. or at, at any time at yeah. any time yeah nobody should mm. nobody should at all yeah. But obviously, you, you you do get the odd one or two that will tr- that will try. Mm. So I feel like positivity and like motivating other people actually comes from yourself and recent experience or experiences that you've had in your life, and mm. you've realised, okay, I was this low. Mm. I'm going to swap this negative thing out mm. with this positive thing. Yeah. We'll swap that out there. Mm. Okay, I had a bad situation here. What's the silver line in here? Mm. It's a bad situation, but there's always something good. We'll take the good out of that and we'll throw it away. Mm. I always say to people, Anthony, for myself, anyway, if, if I had a year, <clears throat> if I had a year, right, so from the 1st of January to the very end of December, mm. I would rather take something small each month out of them years, out of them months, mm. than have one big thing through yeah. the year. 100%. Mm. Because that's still going to be, okay, this little bit has happened. That'll keep me going. Something happens the next month. Grant, that'll keep me going. Something good happened instead of something bad. Then you go into the next month. It's given to you in little drips yeah. instead of having one big good thing at the end of the year, whether it be, say, for a holiday or anything like that. So, something to look forward to. Yeah, I agree. And I feel yeah. like this is something that 
people now I know everybody's stressed about holidays and mm. all this but seek the reward at the end that's mm. that's seek the reward at the end is what I say to everybody even working in super value people yeah. are just like oh I want to go home early oh I'm tired mm. seek the reward at the end mm. and, and for the likes of that the likes of that where with work and so it's the pay you're working towards yeah. the pay you know, yeah, exactly. like that and when you were saying when you were saying that you'd rather pick little small things throughout the year, that's it. It's setting goals for yourself, and as you said that, you're going to look forward to them. And when you accomplish them, yeah. that will give you more um, kind of a boost to accomplish and do more things. Also, uh, so I, yeah. I totally agree with you on that. And um, but um, yeah, so the way this kind of podcast goes is that I, I introduce them, I, I talk about them, and then we go on a low. We hit a fucking like a film where it goes out and then goes boom, drops, then it'll come back yeah. up. And for, I, I want to ask, um, was there a point in your life where um, there wasn't any, when you went to try to pursue all this and that uh, you were kind of thinking to yourself, right, this is, I can't do this, this is not what I want to do or, or so like that as well. Is there any points like that, even when a teenager, because you said when you were 13 and you were taking yeah. off the streets because like, you were probably hanging around with the wrong crowd of people or so like that, what what was the reason for that? Like, what was the what was what was the reason for being that down, that low? If you don't, if you don't mind sharing, um, no, one hundred percent. Um, I feel like the conversation that you have mm. is different with winners mm. and losers. Yeah. Not losers in a way, but people who, who people who aren't motivated, people who who just want to stay stuck in one place. I that's not me. I don't want to stay stuck in one place. If you sit with winners, the conversation is different. Yeah. And I felt like I just wasn't surrounding myself with people that wanted to go anywhere in life. They just wanted to stay there on the streets, get into trouble, do whatever. That wasn't about me. Mm. I didn't want bringing trouble to my door the way Laz brought trouble to their door. Yeah. So. As I said, I took the silver line in Elby. I was just like, I can stay here and this can be really bad or just go. Just go. And at a young age, that's what go. you decide. Are you, you know, when you're, when you're 13, you're, you're getting into the years of when you want to impress your friends and you and you, yeah. you know, things to do that. But at 13 years of age, of whatever, what, you said it was 13 and so, 13, 14, that you've kind of, you kind of, like sat there and goes right this is not what i want to do i want to actually do something that will yeah. occupy me and keep me going and that i can walk towards and so like that as well so uh it's 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 actually it's weird to hear that at a young age that's you had your mindset for that you get me because most teenagers don't do you know what i mean we all just yeah. want to go hang out with our friends and stuff like that but as you get older and um, that's when that's when you start getting that thought when you're yeah. like 17, 18, you're like, right, these lads are just sitting on a wall, uh, on a wall, the fucking piles in our arse are growing on them from fucking <laughs> hair and stuff. <laughs> Jimmy, like, and they're fucking, and they're mad, like, they're, they're doing nothing. And you don't want to yeah. be, you don't want to be surrounded, as you said, with them people. You want to be surrounded with people that do things. And that's the reason why I do this podcast, Dean, is to get creative exactly. people on and exactly. people that are doing something. I'm not getting a fella, yeah. as I said, that's coming on, sitting on a wall all day, fucking robbing bikes, <laughs> robbing cars, fucking doing this, telling me that he was in the back of his friend's car last week. I don't want to know. I don't, you're, you're doing fucking nothing. I don't want to know. So I want to, I want interesting people on. I want fucking people like yourself on that's, do, that's doing the things awesome. that will continue to do. <laughs> and I want to yeah. ask as well that I've asked every single person that came on here, and I'm going to ask you as well as that, when Let's you go. do stuff the way what you do, and people give you compliments face to face, are you the type of person that can take the compliment or can't take the compliment? You're like, oh, you're like, oh yeah, no, no, you're grand, you're grand. Oh, you're just, <laughs> what, what, what type of person are you when it comes to the compliments? Um, I don't know. I I kind of just play it. I just play it off. It's yeah. like I'd go into Super Value and people would be like, "Yeah, I have like this." As you can tell, I'm wearing a yellow jumper. Um, uh, I have a yellow jacket as well. Mm -hmm. Um, I have a yellow jacket and I wore that into work sometimes. Or so, some uh some days. And there's one manager called Darren, our team leader called Darren, mm. nice man. And he'd always say, "Oh, look at his yellow jacket! Isn't it gorgeous and all?" And I'm just like. Yeah, I just felt like I had to come in here and brighten up a few people's days. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I just, I just play it off mm. like that yeah. and just keep it going. So it's like you're accepting it. 
but we'll mm. flip it around into a joke mm. as well at the same time. I flip it back on them. I'm like, ah, yeah. yeah, they're not as nice as them brown shoes you had on yesterday. Yeah. Or something like that. And mm. it's all about just flipping it around, man, and just keeping keeping a good energy that's there in the moment and time lit because you don't know what was going on before that with him mm. or with me or yeah, exactly. anything, like, anything like that. You know what I mean? I, you know what I mean? I, these days, Anthony, anything can just hit you. Yeah. 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 And I, I, I think that's good yeah. what you were talking about, man, where uh, you'd flip it around and you'd go back to them because um it, it sounds to me that you you will accept compliments, but it's not all about you. Like you won't go, Oh no, yeah. man, thanks very much. Like you 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 accept a compliment, but you also give it back. And that's it. That's yeah. a good thing as well, you know. And yeah. most most people I had on there, they'd be like, "Ah, oh, no, I don't like compliments." Or, "Yeah, <laughs> I know secret. Uh, I don't give a fuck. I don't care exactly. I don't care who you are. I don't care who you are. Everybody loves compliments, and they don't admit everybody. It. And everybody needs to hear them every now and again. <laughs> everybody needs to fucking hear them. As you were saying, that someone could be going through something that day or that week or something could happen and you don't know. And that one compliment, yeah, the fucking brighten them up. I used to work in Super Value, work there for a month, was on the tails for eight hours a day, and I'm not fucking oh, going back. Nice, there. No, man, no, nice. no, no, not fucking there, sitting there on me hole. Fucking, fucking people complaining that the fruit and veg is an extra it's five cent off. And I'm like, will you fucking buy it? Like, and they're telling me to get a manager and the fucking breads. I, I just couldn't do it. And I walked in oh. retail, and that's the only thing that I kind of know. That's the only area that I know besides this kind of stuff. And yeah, from doing that stuff and this stuff, even though this stuff doesn't pay my bills, I have to fucking, I'm social welfare. So, they, but COVID payment. <laughs> no, not even fucking COVID payment. COVID payment. <laughs> um, even though, even though um, I, just, I just get money from the social welfare, I get to do what I want to do. And it's making, exactly. it makes me happy. Yeah, I wake up every day going, I don't have to listen to some fucking idiot in there to get me that, that <laughs> their anger and their fucking frustration. <laughs> mostly. So, uh, like I said, I'm fucking getting wild. Anyway, we're going back to your family. <laughs> You're like, um, it's like PTSD for you, isn't it? Yeah, fucking right. right <laughs> come back, back to the tail. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not messing, Dan. I'm not fucking messing. And I'm going to tell you this right now, right? Um, on, I used to lie. I, when I was in bed, I swear to God, um, the girl, my girlfriend, I was with at the time, and um, she, we were we were lying in bed, and I'm not messing. We were literally there, and because I was on the tails eight hours a day, five days a week, Dean, I'm not fucking shitting you. When I used to wake up in the middle of the night and go next, I swear to God, I used to go next like that, and she'd fucking be like, "What the fuck?" And I'm like, "I fucking dr- I'm dreaming a work. I'm fucking going to work. I'm screaming next. Like what the fuck? It's so weird, man. It's fucked up." Man, and, uh, I know exactly what you're talking yeah. about because in in work, uh, I'm part of the click and collect team. Mm. So basically, I'd go in there at what it be six o'clock in the morning. Go in there with six to two shift. Go in at six, and we get like these little guns, and there'll be orders brought in. Mm. So since quarantine started, we brought in like a click and collect service. Now every other super value they'd have their own driver that would do like little journeys or whatever but these are when people actually come to the door click and we give them their shop so myself and the team that i'm part of there we go around and we pick all the shopping Hmm. and um there's a phone there's a phone okay that connects to the speaker outside yeah and i mean i hear it I hear it, and I, I, I'm not even in work, and I heard the phone, yeah. and I was in work one of the days, and I was actually covering on tails. Yeah. Now, about three days previous to this, previous to this, I heard that ringtone, yeah. and I didn't have the phone, and I heard it. Oh. Three days, yeah. right? And then I was standing there at the checkout, and, I, and it goes off. Yeah. It goes off, and it's yeah. like someone's playing it out, out, out in a fucking speaker. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like this, looking around or yeah, whatever, yeah. and there's customers being like, "Oh, sorry, can I grab your hand?" I'm just like, "One minute, yeah. well, where's One it coming minute. from? Where's it coming from?" Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, like, I didn't know where it was coming from, yeah. and then I was just like slowly following the sound, and I found it, and it was my manager, and I was like, "Do you realise what you've just done to me? <laughs> Do you realise what you've just done <laughs> yeah, to me?" I think you're going mad, like, like, oh man. Because I thought I was hearing it, and then when I heard it out loud, I was like, "No, oh my God, no, oh God, oh no, I'm gone, I'm yeah, gone." Yeah. My brain is gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. I think that happens to everyone down retail. They hear the fucking beep, the fucking beeping noise. You get me when they're scanning stuff through. They hear stuff. They fucking scream uh, next in the fucking middle of the night. Um, <laughs> fucking mad. But um, 
I'm gonna I'm gonna get back <laughs> as well now. <laughs> I'm gonna get back to uh, for the likes of you when you're dancing. Yeah. You're dancing, right? I'm, that's what I do. I go off fucking subjects and come back. But yeah. For the likes of you're dancing, man, because <laughs> I fucking I'd love to join um, a dance group. I would. I'd fucking yeah. I'd, since I'm small, I love doing it. I remember when. I was in school and I, I wouldn't be uh, a very popular fucking, I wouldn't, I'd be shy. I'd be like, Anthony, what's that? I, I wouldn't even raise my hand to go fucking toilet. Do you get me? I'd be like yeah. that and then everybody would look at it and say, like, yeah, what's up? And I'm like, no, you're all right. It's just piss myself. It's grand. And like, I just didn't mind. Like, but I remember the first ever time. Um, and I think you shared the same kind of love for this dancer as well, this entertainer that Michael Jackson, uh, when he died, oh, when man. he died, man. I remember just sitting there and I would sit in the, um, the sit room and I'd sit there and learn his dances for some reason because I was yeah. a little weird child yeah. fucking set in all the time and just like, oh, go on. <laughs> and, uh, Quarantine is all this... the time for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the fucking... Uh, so what happened was is that there was a talent show coming up, right? And I think I yeah. said this already in the podcast, but I'll say it again for yourself, um, that um, there was a talent show coming up and I remember I was sitting in class and what happened yeah. was is that someone was going around going, anyone want to do a talent show? And all the boys were like, talent shows are for fucking Egypt, right? And I'm just there. <laughs> and I just go, oh, I'd like to do it. As in the fucking Egypt <laughs> raising his hand, right? But the one fucking fella, right? And the next of all, everybody's head just questions. went, <laughs> just like, <laughs> and just looked at me. And I was like, shit. And they were like, what are you gonna do? And goes, I'm, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna dance. Um, I'm gonna dance. And they're literally just like, what do you mean you're gonna dance? We're gonna fucking Irish river dance. And I'm like, no, I'll show you. I'll show you all right. So on the night, on the night, right? All the boys came to it. All the boys came to it. And like, these were the fellas that were fucking bully in the hall and give you fucking punches to the ribs and all right. You were a fucking punching bag, right? And I remember that I went on stage then. And when I went on stage and I performed, the whole fucking, the whole skill fucking rose on their feet and was fucking like, ah, like clapping. Even the, fell, even the fellas for fucking using me for boxing practice were like, oh, and, and, and. and I was like, I'm not a punching bag. Yeah, I'm not anymore. anymore. Yeah, literally. And well I, done, came first place. I came for place. I came for I came for place and I won it. And I was like, boys, you're not going to fucking bully me anymore. And ever since yeah, then, okay, ever, you know, ever since then, it was grand. Like, do you get me? I'd fucking, um, no one fucking used me as the punching bag. They used another fucking fella in class. And I was even there a few times going, go on, fucking give it to him. Go on, get him, get him. Yeah, because I didn't want to fucking get hit. So I was like, go on, get him. Um, the first yeah. time you put up your hand, you go and win force I place. know, it's fucking mental. Madness. Killing and, it, man. You killed and, it. But I, I always wanted to be, do dancing and I wanted to do hip hop. That's what I wanted to yeah. do. And um, I, I don't know. I think I don't know if I'd ever fucking do it. But for the likes of yourself, you're, you're a dancer, man. You, you're you part of a dance group as well. So do you want to talk about the dance group a bit more? Yeah, I was, when I first joined um, dancing, I joined a local, a local stage girl called Sing Act Dance. That's the home, man. That's the home. Yeah. When that empire is built and people are coming up beside me, man, they're there with me. They, yeah. I, owe, I owe them a lot yeah. um, regarding when it comes to me dancing and acting. And when I first started acting, Mary Murray as well, um, who's in love, hey, much yeah. respect, much love for Mary. She used, to, um, she, used to, she taught me three or four times. I went to acting classes before in town when I was younger. She was there three yeah. or four times. She acted. Opened and the then she never actually. showed up anymore. And I was like, where's she gone? She, I, I thought it was probably only a three, three four week course. And there's me going, this is supposed to happen for every week. Like, for, yeah, go on. <laughs> yeah, every Sunday. Yeah. But uh, Mary Murray, yeah. Um, regarding like, the dancing side of things as well, I was actually the same as yourself. Man, when it came to like Michael Jackson or when I was looking at certain dance moves that different people could do, the likes of Jason Derulo, Chris Brown and all them kind Push of stuff. fucking Every- Neo, everybody. Like- yeah, exactly. Yeah. Back flipping in the kitchen and all, <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> but um, it was like even one, one specific one I remember doing, and it took me days, was the moonwalk. Yeah. Was the moonwalk, and I seen it. And I used to always see it on the telly when I was sitting there watching MTV or from just scrolling through YouTube. And I, was, I used to be like, Pause. Mm. Okay, so he has his he has his foot up here, and he's pushing back off the ball of his right foot to slide mm. his left foot back, mm. and then he swaps it. So I'm literally, man, literally just used to just stand there and just try do any dance move, and I done that for like a year, Jeez. a year, two years, and then I joined, I joined Sing Act Dance then run by uh, Tony Colo, Jesse Morris, Tulin, and Grace Collender are up there as well. 
owed him I owed him a lot and Emar Bar was also my singing teacher mm. up there as well and without them and Mary I wouldn't be here yeah. I wouldn't be here as as we were chatting about earlier on there's a lot of times where you, you do get down and you mm. would be like oh maybe this isn't for me yeah. but as I said surrounding yourself with the right people at that moment in time can change that mm. and they did yeah. and they changed it and then I went on then to to excel majorly straight out of college thanks to these people pushing and having belief in me and mm. sometimes that's what you need you, you can have your confidence there but you'd have that one, 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 one or two people that are in your area just like you can do it you mm. can do it mm. you know what I mean you need these people to push you up and they're the people that you have to keep around and we're still good friends now like we chat when the forge was open we'd go up for a drink but it's closed now <laughs> <laughs> it's closed now oh but man. think about when it opens back up and everything is n- like not like i won't i don't think it'll be back to normal for a good while but it'll be no. livable we'll be able to we'll be able to live a bit more and go yeah. to more people but imagine when you when you can't Jamie, it'll be worth yeah. it and it'll be it'll be better yeah. than going up every single week or every month or something that you're yeah. used to now do you know what I mean? and it'll be it'll just it'll be yeah. it'll mean so much more when you go and get that fucking first point or the first drink and then you're there with people and you're like i fucking miss this and then you have so much to talk in the reward yeah exactly the reward. exactly Exactly. Get that point the Guinness saying at the end of all of it. <laughs> but every, I, I, every I seen, all the wages. I seen <laughs> I seen um that um on Instagram as well as that um do you do you um do you dance in different countries as well? Were you dancing in different countries? Because you were fucking standing by side planes and all doing this fucking stuff. Like <laughs> like, and I'm just there going, look at this fella. <laughs> you know I mean? So what, what was that like? Yeah, so when I went um, fresh out of school, I went into college. Mm. And I went to Liberty's College, um, just up there beside Christ Church. Uh, met some, of, some amazing people there, amazing performers, amazing, amazing dancers, singers. Everybody was so versatile. Mm. Um, you had Sodem Solana, absolutely amazing. Mm. Absolutely amazing dancer. <laughs> he went on to represent Ireland, the K-pop over in uh, South Korea, Jesus. and won. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? One, yeah. one of the boys won and <laughs> represented Ireland. Yeah. Uh, I have another good friend of mine, Ben Lawless, who uh, the first time we actually I actually went on tour was with Ben, and that was with Pickles at um, Emerald Isle Theatre Company. It was called at the time. And myself and Ben went over to France, Belgium, and Luxembourg for eight months. Mm. And we started off in Belgium. We started off here doing rehearsals in Dublin, doing whatever, preparing for the show, script work, editing scripts and getting choreography and songs down. And then when we went over then to Belgium, <coughs> we then went over and done the second part of the training, which was the actual workshop and course for the students that we were doing. Mm. So basically what we do is we drive how many ever hours it would be. I think the longest myself and Ben done was a four hour drive to do like one show. And the show was only 45 minutes. Okay. So we drove four hours for one show and then to drive four hours back. And that was at six o'clock in the morning. It was, it was early days. <clears throat> so we'd all wake up, get a coffee into us. Mm. But we'd go then and we'd do the shows. Then we'd also do workshops then as well for the, for the skills. Yeah. So the skills of uh, text. Zabi was his name. Mm. Zabi. He's great, man. Did you ever see the film Surf's Up? I fucking, is that the animation? Yeah, the animation just yeah, 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 yeah. with the penguins. Yeah. yeah, do you know the penguin that um, uh, Zeke? Not not Zeke. The one I that was fucking, I, honestly, in the I forest. Can't, I can't fucking the remember. One that was the mad the looking forest. fucking hair and shit. Yeah. And all, is it? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what he looks like. Right, it was him. Right, <laughs> <laughs> that's what I hear. Right, it was him. And uh, he brought us over. And the first time we went and we done a show, it was a kid show, mm. and I played a genie. I played a genie at the time and it was about, it was basically, <clears throat> I, I was like a bank robber or I worked for somebody who was evil, me and this other girl. And then Ben was the love interest, the male mm. love interest. And then yeah, uh, we had the female love interest then who was Lily. And then Neve then was, was the bad guy with me. Mm. But then we changed, there's like seven or eight roles or multiple roles in one show. So I'd be wearing one costume and then I'd have to run behind stage and get into a full genie costume oh, and then come back out. Yeah. And it was major. It, yeah. was, it was absolutely crazy, but it was good. Because yeah. we, uh, 
there was a scene and uh, it was when Matt wished to be a rock star and he came in and I came in as a security guard and I'd every show just to keep it spiced up or keep people on their feet, the security guard would come out with something different yeah. every time. So I'd come out in the love interest t-shirt dress with earpiece in my ear and mm. talking like this and starting on kids and getting yeah. kids to get off the stage and all. Yeah, yeah. One of the times uh, I walked out, we have like um, lingerie, yeah. if yeah. you will. I walked out and I had like a red, a red hat on mm. and I had the lingerie oh. on over like a short and tie and I was, it was like pinned under the bottom oh. as well. <laughs> so all the kids would be like, oh no, yeah, no. What the fuck? <laughs> but, but you'd have some people, man, who'd absolutely love it. Yeah. I remember there was one show that we done. We had two shows. So that one was Three Wishes and then we had On My Way. On My Way was um, a show about a girl uh, who is incompetent. She 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 doesn't really know how to do anything for herself. She's not very independent. Mm. And she likes mm. this boy, and this boy challenges her to go on the Wild Atlantic Way. Mm. And she goes, mm. okay. And she goes and does the Wild Atlantic Way, and she meets loads of other people across her journeys and all this kind of stuff. But that was more of an adult show. Yeah. <clears throat> and then yeah. the genie one was for the kids. Mm. But I remember one time I went into a school and... We were doing the kids show for 19 and 20 year olds. What the fuck? Yeah. So we, students walk in in like Louis Vuitton purses, yeah. Gucci caps, yeah. Balenciagas on. I'm just like, oh, this is going to be a bad oh, day. No. This, no <laughs> this is gonna... yeah. We're in the hood, man. We're in yeah. the hood, in the yeah. middle of France. Yeah. Yeah. Right? <laughs> we'll just see what the crack is. And then we went out and all. And I, I usually like, jump onto somebody's lap. And your yeah, man jumped up and put his fist up. And I was just like, mate, sit down, will you? <laughs> He's like, just sit down and just enjoy the show. And then I went to go over to his mate who was funny. And then he jumped up. And we were all just like, what the lads, fuck? we're only here for a laugh. Yeah. It's only did a you, laugh, you know. Did you, did you break character? Did you, character? did you have to break character? No, no, no. Never. No, yeah, never. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, no. yeah, yeah. I was, I was asking the question there because you know, fucking, <laughs> I've been what fucking losing that now. No, 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 I'm not, I'm not doing anymore. I'm done. I'm yeah. done taking off costumes now. But no, man, and it was just weird the way that some people kind of reacted, re react to yeah. Peter yeah. and stuff like that. Do you know it what I mean? So fucking strange, yeah. Yeah, so we were just like, come on, we, we, we just sit down, enjoy the show, and then we'll all go home. Yeah, and then we'll all go. Yeah. Home. If I was doing that and these fellas were strolling in wearing this, I'd be like, Here, sit down. That's from the fucking market. That doesn't get in, but that's fake. <laughs> you fuck. bought that in Turkey, man. You bought that in Dons, you dope. <laughs> doesn't even say Louis Vuitton. <laughs> fucking sense for Don. <laughs> You're mad, you? Yeah, but I see you stitch that label on, boy. <laughs> 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 All his mates had just rent, rent a homie. That's yeah, what they had. Literally, rent yeah. a homie. <laughs> but uh, I, I want to ask as well, is that uh, between stage and doing films itself, um, what, what would you prefer? Like, would you rather be do, Would you rather be on stage and theatre or would you rather do short films and feature films? Um, I feel like that there's a completely different yeah. energy and aura to both. Mm. And one that, one, one that I enjoy is theatre. Yeah. I love it, man. I genuinely do love it. I love doing it. I love seeing it. Yeah. It's it, it just gives you a different it's just a different level. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like the way when people say, Oh, I prefer to speak to somebody face to face than by text because yeah, you yeah. know people's reactions and you can gauge stuff yeah. by that. And that's what that's what I kinda compare doing theatre with. As in like there's always the reaction is gonna be there is always going to be there and you're going to be 100% confident if it's a laugh or whether it's a, yeah, do you know what I mean? Definitely. You're going to know there and then what it is and then, and then you know, right, well then maybe have to switch it up this way or we try it at a different pace or we try time things a little bit better, whether it be yeah. coming in on the line faster or if it was for comedy reasons, as I said, you'd know yourself yeah, when yeah. it comes to your comedy. Yeah, it's come here, man. The, Jesus Christ. I'd, I'd, doing, doing videos and all is great. Doing podcasts is great, but yeah. I started doing stand up again this year and it was fucking brilliant. I even got invited down to the Navin for the night to fucking perform and it was my best performance and it was fucking brilliant. You know I me? Mean? 
and plotted. Um, but before I left, the, before the coronavirus happened, that uh, I went on stage <laughs> and I done a completely different set. Um, and yeah. every man it was fucked up, and everybody just looking at me like I had two heads. Just like, and then even one of the comedians down the back were like, "Oh my god, is it supposed to be funny?" And I heard it, and I was like, <laughs> "Oh no!" And I just went with it. So I start fucking going mad. <laughs> no. Not mad. Like, I start going fucking. I just done whatever I wanted to do. And I remember sitting there and I'm on the bus going home going, I'm not fucking doing this again. It's a lot of yeah, I want to do it again. Fuck this. I'm feeling yeah, fuck that fella. Do you get me? Yeah, and fuck uh, that fella. And uh, I remember being on the bus and I, I remember going home and I was like, man, this, I don't think this is for me. But in them fucking moments, as it would be yeah. on stage when you're supposed to get a reaction the way you are, you know that you have to do something different to change it up. But yeah, again, yeah, it could be the crowd cool. as well. It could be the fucking crowd. The crowd could not be, yeah. you know, the, the people with the fucking fake Louis Vuittons and stuff like that. That's not your crowd. Yeah. You get me? That's and, it. And that's yeah. the idea. So I, for me personally, I, I, I totally agree with you when it's live performance. You get to see the reaction. You get to see the joy. And that's yeah. what gives you more inspiration to do it as well. I can't wait to go back yeah. and do stand-up. Like, I can't fucking wait to go yeah. back. And if I fucking bomb, I'm going to fucking, I'm going to embrace it. You get me? That's what I'm going to do. I don't care. There you go. Yeah, that's so, it, man. It's something to look forward to now. Yeah, at, yeah. The, at the end of all this, mm. is getting back on stage. And I feel like for a lot of performers, like I have a few friends, um, like a girl I went to college with, Hayley McMahon, she's doing very well over in London for herself. Mm. And so is Ben. And do you know what I mean? We're all affected by this in this yeah. industry, whether mm. it be acting, dancing, podcasts, mm. anything like that. We're all going to be affected by it. Yeah. And we're all just dying for it to get back. And I feel like that everybody's going to come back with a complete different mentality and drive after being stripped of it mm. from so long, yeah. regardless of, of how long the COVID works. Are. So I feel like that there's going to be a lot of work that's going to come, um, whether it be people writing their own work, whether people be presenting work on the likes of, <clears throat> on the likes of Fish Pond and all that kind of stuff, mm. Star Now. But mm. I feel like that there's going to be a lot of work and I feel everybody's going to have a different mentality coming out of this to yeah. pursue what they want to do. Yeah. As I said, because it's been stripped away from them for, could be nine, ten months. It could be and more, man. I had, more. A, I had, um, I don't know if you know her, she's a Facebook comedian, she does videos, totally rootless, her name is. She does videos totally on her car and so, yeah, she does, I recently had her on and um, yeah. she, was, she was really, um, she really good, but she was predicting that this could last like even three years, two years and stuff and all and, you, yeah, you kind of have to take down the perspective as well, but you also need to have that hope as well that probably a year down the line. But even when we have that vaccine, because we will, like back then when it was, we, I was saying it's the Spanish flu, we didn't have the medicine that we have today. Yeah. You know I mean, that's what they're trying to compare it to as well, the Spanish flu. I think it was 1918 to 19. 19- Is it? I think it was, yeah. It was like that. And they were trying to compare it to the Spanish flu. That, that, that comparing it to saying, besides the Spanish flu, this is the kind of probably the worst thing. Do you get me? That for like that lasted for two years. And they that just kind of disappeared. Do you get me like that? Or they fucking done something for but for the likes of ourselves, we have much like we know a lot more now. We have better medicine as well. So even when yeah. we get that vaccine, we still have to wait until that's able to multiply and then we have to spread it out. And yeah. So it'll be even another like six months, a year or something. I know if there's people watching and they're worried that they're not going to see their like nanny, granddad, ma, da or so, because there's people that have asthma, they have like heart conditions and so, you know, and I am, um, if anybody's watching that is just, just remember that this isn't going to last. This isn't going to last no. because everything no. that we do is like mankind itself is that we always accomplish it and we always come out from it do you get me and because yeah. of the positivity people are sharing right now and the way uh, we are as a community the whole bloody world is in on it is that yeah. that's what's getting us through it so uh, that's that's what i wanted to say in that but, um, 100%, 100% yeah, man. 100 agree with that as well and you couldn't yeah. have said it better yeah. like you are going to have a lot of negative people that are going that are going through that that are part of this and that are frustrated but one thing I always say to people is, I said, the best thing about negative people is, is that they remind us of who we don't want to be or who exactly. we don't want to act. Mm. And I feel like if people, if people look at other people and take a bit of inspiration as in, okay, well, I'm going through this and that man is, is angry because of it. I don't want to be like that or, mm. or regardless of anybody. Mm. Obviously now people go through stuff as well. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? And I'm not going to take away from that. We all go through stuff on, mm. on, a, on, on the daily. Oh, yes. Right. Yeah. But it's all about how you just come out the other side of all that shit. Mm. And I feel like if, if people, I said about the quotes, if one person sees my, sees my quote on my Instagram mm. and they take it, mm. that's one more person yeah. that could survive this quarantine. Yeah. Till this is that till this is over. Mm. Do you know what I mean? All we're hearing now is deaths and new cases. We're not hearing anything about about when it could be over. Mm. What's going to happen when it's the over? Of people that are recovering from it as well. Exactly. You, know, you, exactly. you hear it, but you don't hear it as much as the death. But that's what the news do. Yeah. Those you said earlier that the news, you stopped watching yeah. the news, and so did I. I at the start, I was like, right, I'm watching this news. They have the sources, but then you start seeing on the like newspapers, and then you start seeing that, yeah. that articles, and it's a, they put an old man. And he looks so vulnerable, and they're probably like, "Here, just look a bit mental there for a second, Jimmy." And they take a picture, and they just yeah. go, like, "We're gonna write fucking." I don't mean mental as in that, but they're gonna write. Look at my, look at my man twitching your eye there for a minute. Look at my <laughs> like, and then they have the caption going, uh, "Will he ever see his his parents? Uh, will he ever see his kids again, or his grandkids?" And that, that's what they're doing. They're selling that because the news nowadays, everybody knows that it's fucking. It's most of it is fucking bullshit, and they just try to. Sell yeah. as much as you can for ratings, yeah. and this right now, this is what they fucking feed on, and it's negativity yeah. itself. So, but my ma, my man and dad would watch the news. You get me, and my dad yeah. would be really like, this is "What happens and stuff." And but I can't, I can't say, "Don't be doing nothing," because that's why the, that's where they come from. You know, we're, we're different generations, yeah. so we know that. And even the generations are, are like after us, like my kids and my kids' kids are like that as well, and the likes of yourself and all. Is that yeah. they would Sense. they would have more you know, more sense as the years go on the generations go on they're just getting smart like kids man look fucking ipads in their hands at nine years of age man i didn't have Mate, I I was fucking 15 15 yeah. i'm only 20 yeah man. yeah the first phone i got was a motorola phone and it was a little flip phone that we got and i got it when i was around 13 14 That's as well mad, isn't and it? even now man hopefully one day when i have when i have a good a good career and a, mm. and a lovely healthy family mm. i won't be getting my kids iphones at the ages of 14 or 14 not a ch- not a fucking yeah boy chance. then they'd probably have a job and all and they'd be fucking <laughs> ranking in the money <laughs> yeah, and i think yeah the way the kids are gonna be they're Hell like the da, I'm, I'm i'm going out and i'm getting a full-time <laughs> job nine to five i'm gonna work in super value and it's like you're only seven, you mad thing, you. Don't even know how that bloody count. Yeah, and then my kid's gonna wake up every night, go next, and I'm gonna go fucking mad thing. What you say, Uda? You know what I mean? What the hell you guys scare me? <laughs> Father, like son. <laughs> don't, don't walk in zoo. <laughs> yeah, don't fucking walk in it. But, uh, don't go I, on the pill. It's a bad idea. <laughs> I'm gonna fucking. I'll be old. Did you ever see the war veterans and they come back from war and they have the PTSD? I'm not slagging, by the way. I'm just putting off as a comedy way. But and they're there and they're just like, get him! And they're like, and they're fucking mad and you think they're in now. I'm literally gonna be old and that shit's gonna. I'm gonna go through a midlife crisis in my forties and I'm literally just gonna go next, next, and they're just gonna go what? What do you mean next man you're in the car and it's like next exit because i'll have to play it off um but fucking anyway um i i want to ask man um i want to go off this subject i want to i want to go off this subject um is is that um right so this is this is uh this is going back to normal and stuff like that but we talked yeah. about your acting we talked about you know your traveling as well and the, the likes of that and your dancing and mm. um I, w- I want to get in because there's two more segments I have now, and uh, yep. it's I, I'm kind of asking uh, every Irish person this as well. Um, at the moment that I read, there's three films, and I want to ask out these three films which film is your favorite, and especially because you're an actor. So, oh. the commitments, the snapper, or the van, which one is your favorite out of them? Have you watched them? Because I can tell that you've watched them. I know the type of person you are that you've definitely watched them. You pissed yourself laughing over them. Because you can relate to it. People can fucking relate to it. I've watched, I've seen the commitments. You're telling me you haven't seen the fucking snapper of the van? I've seen, I've seen half the snapper. What? I've seen half the snapper. Did you come over you like this? I'd be sitting with my lads and they they chat about a movie like, oh yeah, like Forrest Gump, that's such a good movie, isn't it? I was like, haven't seen it. I only watched Goodfellas in January. Goodfellas? In huh? January. Goodfellas is my favourite film, man. I've seen it yeah. over about 50 times. It's oh, so man. fucking good. It's so good. Oh. 
Train and Day, though. Train and Day is a really good film, yeah. That's it's my really favourite. Good. Yeah. Denzel, man. You know An what? American Gangster. That guy, Kim American Denzel Gangster, is really fucking good. And have you seen the film Fences with Denzel? <laughs> no. I no. remember going to the but cinema, man, and I was so inspired. I, was I just wanted to fucking jump up out of the cinema, run home and fucking write or something. Like, as you were saying earlier, like, <laughs> you just get inspiration. I was just like, fuck it, man. I That's what I'm talking and about. Yeah. And it's, it's fucking great when that happens. And uh, watching that film, What's man. Good? I can, it's so good. And... Uh, Earl Jones, I think his name is. Uh, he done Darth Vader, I think as well. He done, not not. I think yeah, I think James he done Earl Jones. Yeah, yeah. So I I'd fucking mumble yeah. up his name, but he done a live <laughs> performance on uh, uh, doing theater with that. And uh, no way. There's a there's a bit right where it's him and the son, and Denzel does this as well. They're out the back and he's chopping wood, and he goes. He turns around to his dad and he goes, "Do you like me?" And he goes, "What?" And he goes, "Do you like me?" And he got this whole speech is about, I don't know, who says I have to like you? Do you get me? He yeah. goes, who says I have to like you? Um, me and your ma made a deal. We both brought you into this world and now you're going to live for it and stuff. But I'm telling you now, Dean, even after, just go on to YouTube and just watch that little bit. It's so yeah. fucking good. Even thinking about it, I'm getting fucking goosebumps because the fucking, the power of the fucking performance from it is brilliant. It's yeah. so fucking good. Yeah. And, oh my, it's, it's so good. And Denzel really done it fucking well. Uh, Denzel, well. Like, oh man, he's yeah. so versatile. He's yeah. so versatile. Like man, if you look at him playing Frank Lucas in American Gangster, hmm. do you know what I mean? He's really fucking good. I, like I, I, I hate watching that. Like the middle man. The piano. Do you know when they're in the party? Yeah. I hate yeah. that. I go... I can't watch that. That $25,000 Alpec. You dab that shit. And I'm just like, you tell him, Denzel. You tell him. You tell him. He looks Walking at the screen. All oh, right, all oh, right, all oh, right. Roger <laughs> <laughs> McConaughey comes out of nowhere. Yeah. Uh, the gang. <laughs> no. But one of my favorite scenes in American Gangster is, and I feel like, is, um, is when they walk into Cuba Gooding Jr.'s nightclub. Mm. And you walk in and his cousin, his cousin is dressed like Nicky, yeah. like Nicky, and he's yeah. all he's all super fly, and mm. he's all that. And Denzel just calls him backstage. He goes, "Yeah, backstage, fucking hell." And he was like, "What the fuck is this?" Yeah. He was like, "The loudest one in the room is the weakest one in the room." Yeah. And he's like, "Oh, what? You want to be like Nicky? You want to be super fly?" Yeah. And seeing that, like, you're just kind of like, well, throughout the movie, you're like, he is a very weak character. Yeah. But he's wearing all these top designer clothes and. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? He yeah. wants to stand up. It's like he the lads that came to the theatre. Yeah. 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 Exactly, yeah. Literally. Showing the money, but how are you on the inside? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> how are you on the inside? <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, I, th- I think I'm I want to ask you a question. Can I ask you a yeah, question? Yeah, of course you can't. This is the first time now someone will ask me a question. Yeah. One. What made you want to get into doing all the podcasts? Was it um, regarding, was it regarding like, the quarantine and regarding like, the five to five ki- kilometre limit? And, or was it you just wanted to get something that you felt I, like I I'm have time now to do this? I'm always interested in I'm interested in people. I like I'm a bit like being a per, people person, but I also hate people. But um, <laughs> yeah, me so um, but um, <laughs> I I'm I'm very fascinated with people in general and what they do and what they're achieving in themselves, and that's the reason why I make this podcast. Um, oh, there's I I when I was fucking growing up. I didn't have any, there was no one around my estate that would make films or do videos. Do you know what I mean? If you've done videos, yeah. you'd be called gay. Do you get me? You'd be called, I look yeah. like a gay boy there, right? But um, you'd be, that's what I want. I wanted to get in with a crowd and get to know more people like yourself um, that are out there as well. And that, that's the reason why I started this because one, I like, I like people. I'm interested in people. Yeah. I like helping people. I like, as yourself then being positive and staying positive because yeah. I was at a place where I wasn't happy with myself and I didn't really live and stuff get me and then going from there to here and just communicating with people and I think through these times as well as that the most important thing is is that communicating with people uh, if I asked you something Dean right if I turn around to you what's your favorite thing like what's your favorite fucking thing to do or watch like if there's one thing that you love to do what is it um. Oh man, I'm snapping, snapping that the NBA isn't here. 
Right. So <laughs> is, the, is the NBA something that you could talk about for fucking ages? Um, no, but it's no. something that I could sit there and I could literally just zone out into. Yeah. Zone out into regarding UFC now as well. They're the two of them. I'll sit there. I'll watch any person fight anybody. Mm. I'll watch any team play against each other. I'll just, I'll just sit there. I think like, once you have an interest in it, I feel like that your your mentality on it is uh, you're you're already willing to broaden your mentality when 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 you first discover an interest mm. in it. <clears throat> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like even yourself setting up the podcast, you're like, okay, we'll check out. This podcast, the likes of Joe Rogan and mm. all these lads, yeah, and it's it's major. It's mm. it's genuinely major. But oh man, the UFC is is just it's just a completely different ball game. Mm. There's so much respect. But you know what I've gotten into recently, actually, wow. and I actually have so, and I feel like you'll have so much respect as well for these people. I was upstairs and me little sister, me chilling upstairs with me little sister Tony Mulroney. Shout out! Uh, <laughs> I have you on Snapchat. I remember seeing fucking videos and I'm coming into the room. I, I remember them. I fucking remember them. But um, it's actually RuPaul's Drag Race, believe it or not, man. And looking at these lads, mm. they're more of men than I'll ever be. Yeah, you know what I mean? The confidence mm. that them men have, the mm. the level of I don't give a fuck what yeah. you say to me. I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna do that. Mm. It's something. Oh, yeah, it's hard to describe. I can't even yeah. comprehend yeah. how yeah. how mad it is. Do you yeah. know what I mean? How mad it is that for people that are ain't Irish. When we said how mad it is, it's not like oh, they're mental. It's just like yeah, oh, this is this is like I can't believe Crazy. how much. Yeah, because people yeah. are fucking like. What do you mean he's fucking mad? Like Jimmy, there's people out there that are not Irish that won't understand our fucking slang or yeah. logo. But, um, yeah. The, the question that I'm gonna narrow it down to is is that then if I asked you to talk about something that you're passionate about. And you start talking about it, and I can see the joy in your face and the way you're fucking laughing in your mouth. And when I see that reaction, yeah, that makes me happy. It doesn't matter who it is, because oh, I enjoy seeing oh. other people talk about something they're passionate in. And that's why I that's me narrowing it down to what your question. Oh, man. People talking about what they're passionate in. And when I get on actors or filmmakers, that's when they spark up and that's when they come out. Yeah. You get me? hundred percent. So that's because we've all yeah. We've all spent a lot of time in, in, in the game. Do you know mm. what I mean? Like, I'm doing this since I'm um, 15, 16. Yeah. So, I mean, so it's something that, and this is what I always feel like when people like feel about giving up. There's always times where people want to give up, but what was the reason you started? Mm. And you could apply that to any situation. Yeah, that's true. What was the reason that, that you started mm. doing what you do? Started. Because you have a love for it. Yeah, a lot of people the forget love that. For it. A lot of people do forget that, and sometimes it's an escape for people. Yeah. And that's what that's what acting and dancing was for me. Mm. It was an escape. I was in school. I was in trouble in school. I was. I wasn't the best student. It wasn't for me. I mm. just wanted to get out, and I just wanted to perform. <clears throat> and we didn't supply. There was no niche for that. In yeah. schools, in, in my school, Jim the Castle, all boys' school. Mm. There wasn't anything like that. We had talent shows. Fucking hell, I'd but be a country back in that school, I'm telling you now. I'd oh, man, well, here, look, you took that God. talent show by the balls and ran. Right? I, was <laughs> with a, I was in a mixed school. I use it, man. I'm telling you now, <laughs> like, when I played you. football, I, re- I remember walking around the fucking yard and I'd play football. This is how <laughs> fucking bad it was. The, the fellas wouldn't pick me I was the last one they wouldn't pick me I'd go over to the girls say can I play squ- uh, skipping and they'd be like fuck off I couldn't even yeah. play fucking skipping I had to walk around my own bouncing a fucking ball going is it <laughs> like fucking loud kicking a ball against the wall for a yeah, half fucking, hour alright lads all right. yeah. Hey, look at me, I can kick a ball. Do you want me to? Come on. Garrett broke his leg. You need a player. No, we'd rather Garrett. Thanks. Yeah. Um, oh, it's not my ball. Ask him. Yeah, it's not my ball. Ask this fella. Ask ball, him. Yeah, it's fucked up. Oh, there's already enough on the team. Oh. <laughs> you just walk off, sir. It's mad, though. But um, I'm gonna get into the I'm gonna get into the last segment now, right? And and this Love is it. completely different. I don't know. I don't care what I talk about. This person could be a scientist. This will ask this question. Um, yeah. Guys, so you know a boy now, and um, we're going to get into the, the last so, uh, subject, and it is ghost stories. Ooh, scary. Right? 
So I have two questions. No, yes. no, no. Well, listen, no. I, have, I have two questions for you. One, do you believe in the afterlife or sorry, that? And two, do you have a story you can tell us? Now, it's all right if you don't, but let us know. Oh, man. Literally. Do you that, have stories? Do you have stories? That scares me the most. Yeah, yeah it scares the show. I mean, I love me hearing them. Oh, I, was li- I was sitting down here yesterday, actually, with uh, my little sister. Mm. And we had the doors open. And the door slammed closed. Mm. And I goes to her. I just said out loud, just goes, what if the cousin of that was a ghost? And then you said... My like, little sister was like, I thought the exact same thing. And I goes, I'd never fucking live here again. Yeah. I would <laughs> never, ever. I would leave here with the clothes I have on my back. Yeah. And I'd go to the Fino or I'd go somewhere. I would not stay in this house. I yeah. can't deal with ghosts. I can't watch horror movies. I can't do anything like that. I, I, I love horror movies, man, because oh, when I was a kid, oh. they used to scare the shit out of me. And I don't get that same feeling every, anymore. And I do oh, not get that same. Yeah. And it's that feeling. I don't know what it is. It's just a fucking trail. But I'd be sh- scared shitless of Chucky Freddy Krueger. Like, I still have nightmares about fucking Freddy Krueger. And I was a kid when I had to uh, watch the book. Oh, um, but these kind of a stories and people telling me this, it's like, oh, come on, fucking. And one fella, no, man, I was I doing can't. a podcast. There was a telly there then, and it's on the podcast. This girl was, no, listen, right? I know this more likely it didn't fucking, it wasn't a ghost, right? But the girl was talking. She said that when she was, when she was, someone passed away and she'd gone through a bad time and she felt a hand on her shoulder. It was like a weight on her shoulder yeah. and she turned around. There was no one there. And the the ha- the weight was still there, and she was like, "Go away!" Like, and it's just like the weight went off. And but yeah. I tried to reenact it, and I done that. But the telly came right down on top of me, and <laughs> broke me. Like it's in me recording, and it just came down, and I was like, "Nicola!" Like I was like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> like that, and go, um, yeah, I was just fucking, <laughs> and I fucking oh, jumped no. out the window. But do you have a story oh, you can tell us, or do you know anybody that you know, like in the family or so, that has a fucking creepy story that you can share? Um, there was actually one night when you were just chatting there about your one, and she felt the weight. Hmm. I was sitting there one of the night, and I was watching the last dance, the new Michael Jordan thing. Yeah, and I was sitting there watching it. And it was around two or three in the morning. I was off work the next day. And I just felt like my, my, like my throat just felt like it, it closed. Like as in there was like, yeah. I just couldn't breathe for a minute. Yeah. And I don't know if it was me bleeding lung giving out. <laughs> but, <laughs> I don't know what the fuck it was. Yeah. But I just, I just felt, I just felt so much pressure on my neck. Yeah. And I literally had to jump up. And yeah. when I jumped up, it was like, I caught my breath again. Yeah. Now, I'm no scientist. <laughs> or if anybody's watching this, Bill, I'm anybody a scientist writer. This, you link, me, link up with me and see if you can help me with this shit. Right. Because okay. Okay. I was terrified, man. I was terrified. Or there was one night I went to see, um, we went to see Paranormal Activity. Yeah. The, the yeah. third one. How many is that? I Pretty think there's on. like 10 at this stage. No, there's probably a 10 at, oh, my yeah, just, fast and furious at this stage. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we went to see it, and in my room at the time, I had a, a, a touch lamp. Yeah. So you tip it once, it'd go up to a on. certain brightness. <laughs> yeah. Do it again, it'd go brighter. You do it yeah. three times, yeah. go brighter, and then the fourth time, then you turn it off. Hmm. But hmm. I had this on a laptop stand or a, a computer stand, and there was multiple times where it fell off and it bounced off the floor, it went rolling whatever <clears throat> and the night I went to see Paranormal Activity 5 I went home and I got into bed and I woke up to the light flashing fuck off as in like somebody as in somebody was tapping it and it was turning on and off and it was going really fucking fast so I just lay there and I was like <laughs> if I don't look up at the light I can't get scared they won't get me they won't get me if yeah, I don't look at them exactly if I don't show any interest I'll yeah. survive yeah, and that's yeah. it. <laughs> you, you see people, yeah. you see people in these scary movies. They be like, ah, oh, yeah. I know where you are. Yeah. And then they tell yeah. me they go. I was just like, I'll just keep my mouth shut. Yeah. I won't say anything, and I'll just, I'll just lie here. <laughs> and then like, yeah, yeah, sorry. I still notice it. Yeah. Oh, I can still notice it, man. And I literally just goes, you know what? Let's just get up and just see what it is. <laughs> so I flung open the covers, yeah. jumped up out of bed, and it was just the wall, and the light was just sitting there flashing. Yeah. Yeah. And I was just like, I just had to, I just plugged it out of the wall. 
Yeah. I just plugged it out of the wall and just turned it off completely. And I was like, now if this lamp turns fucking back on and there's no plug in that wall, <laughs> I'm going to burn this house down to the ground. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to burn this I'm out, I'm out, out yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I can't, I can't, I can't deal. I'd be flicking through the channels and I'd see ghost stories. And I'd be like, oh, thank God I'm not in the mood for a story. And yeah. I'd turn it off. Yeah. Because I can't deal with ghosts, man. I can't deal with That's ghosts. Nice. It's one thing that yeah, it it is scary, isn't it? The thing that, but it's it's good to like imagine that you witnessed something. Imagine you did witness something. Obviously, it's gonna fucking be traumatizing. No, no, but when you no. when you when yeah, but imagine you seeing something. Imagine you no. seeing something, no. and fucking imagine you seeing something. But wouldn't it be nice to know as well that oh wait, that person's dead. That person I can see that that person is still going around. So after all of this. It probably is somewhere you go. Or yeah. Somewhere, you know what I mean? So it would be yeah. nice. You'd be doing that as well. But most of all, you'd be changing your jacks. Uh, changing your, your Yo, changing your jacks. Your jacks. Changing your jacks. Because you'd be shining all over. <laughs> you'd be fucking hell. There was a fella um, last year. I went, um, I went to the south of France. Mm. I was doing uh, shows over there on a campsite resort. And there was a fella called Simbara. Mm. And Simbara... Um, was absolutely amazing. He's a master at capoeira. I don't know if you've heard of capoeira. Oh, no. No. It's, very, it's, it's absolutely phenomenal. The fluidity of it. It's like a style of fighting as well. And it's, it's just so fluid and it's, it's gorgeous to watch. And he used to do workshops for, um, for people. So basically what we do is we'd have like certain events during the day and then a Wednesday, a Friday and a Saturday then we'd have the show. So we were doing Shrek. I was on Shrek. I'm sure you've seen the picture on my Instagram there. Be yeah, green. Did, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we are doing that. But Simara always had a fascination with the afterlife. Mm-hmm. And that scared me quite a bit. So we'd, we would be sitting there and it'd be two or three in the morning and we'd have a few whiskeys in us or we'd all just be sitting there and he was like, let me take a picture. He goes to me at one point, he goes, let me take a picture of your face and I will show you a different face. And I was like, what? Yeah. And he was like, let me take a picture of you and I will find a face on the wall in the background as in evil, evil. And I'm just like, no, 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 yeah. no, Fuck off. <laughs> no, yeah. not a chance. And he's like, come on, just do it. And I was like, I'm not going to do it right now because it's three o'clock in the morning and I'm up to me bleeding. <laughs> Nipples and whiskey. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. With whiskey. Yeah. I'm inhaling the thing at this point. Yeah. And it came to the next day. And he just, he goes, Can I take a picture of you now? And I was like, Yeah, we'll just try it. So we took the picture. And he just played with his phone for about 15, 20 minutes. And I'm sitting there like, yeah. Am I dead or not? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Am I dead or not? And he's just like, maybe we don't see anything. Maybe evil. And I was like, evil? Yeah, yeah. That's evil? Yeah. That's a general title. Do you know what comes on that evil? What, <laughs> define evil for me as in what's going to come. Yeah. And he was just like, we just wait, we just wait. And he gets the phone and flips it and zooms in. He was like, see, face. And I just went, yeah, go on, see you later. Right, I'm going for a swim. <laughs> <laughs> I got up and I left him. I left him there. Yeah. I left him there. I left, jumped on my bike, went up to the beach, went for a swim, was up there for about an hour and a half, two hours, came back then. And I was just like, don't ever speak of what just happened. Yeah, yeah, of yeah. what happened before yeah. I left. I just couldn't deal with it, man. Yeah. And he showed me an actual face. That's fucked up. Now, it might have been the whiskey the night before. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It might have been the whiskey the night before. But holy shit, man, it was fucking scary. It's scary. A friend I'm of like, mine. Like, yeah, sorry. Just couldn't do it, man. Come on, man. A, f- a friend of mine, she, they, these two were dating for years. And when they, when they started dating, um, they would send Snapchats to each other and sell, right? But yeah. this, this girl, she always says there's someone in her, in her house, but. They're not, they're not, they're harmless. They don't hurt or they, they don't do stuff. Yeah. But she was sending Snapchats to, it was my best friend. And uh, one day there, I was, I met up with them and they were like, here, look at this photo and tell me what you think. <laughs> oh, shit. So I'm not messing to this day then. I do not look like, I do not look at that fucking photo. 
I do. I would fucking. <laughs> I'm telling you now. Now listen, listen, oh. lad. Right. So what happened was is that she was taking Snapchats and she was like that, like you know, like it's just like there and like her feet were there, like at the back, and it was just like a nice yeah. little Snapchat photo. But in yeah. the background, then I swear I'll ask her to send it to me, and you can see it. I swear to God, you can look for it for yourself. In the background, you see her like that, and it's black, and a woman's face. Now, I know this family. I know this family. I've been to this family's house multiple of times. There's Don't no go one. to that house There's again, boy. No, no. So what happened is, is that every time I went up to that house and I needed to go toilet, I'd hold it, and I'd rather shit myself <laughs> and walk home with shit in me jocks than, than go up that stairs and go toilet. And I would never go toilet in the house, and I'd sit there going, I'm bursting <laughs> to go toilet. And they're like, just go to the news, and I'm like, no, because I won't be able to come back down. Because once I run into the bathroom, I'm not running out, because you have to see the room. So, <laughs> oh, the room was in front of the bathroom? Like, so, when you walk out of nah. the bathroom, the whole room was right there. Now, no. this is fucking, this is creepy. Now, I can ask her to send to me, if you don't believe, like, I, if you don't believe me, I will send you the fucking send photo. Send it to me. Right? Send it I'll to ask right? her and say, do you remember that photo that? of the, the ghost that you had in the back? Now, I'm not, look. I'm just going to do that, and I'm going to copy and paste and send, I'm not looking at it, because it's, fu- it freaked me out, and to this send day, it fucking freaked me out. It freaked yeah, me. Man, I'll ask. Fun. I'll ask her after this podcast. I'm gonna ask her to send it on. I'm gonna send it to you because it's crazy as fuck. No yeah. man, there was. We are literally just chatting about, after the door slam closed last night. Mm. My dad was like, he goes, "There's a ghost up in Eddie's." Now, me uncle Eddie, yeah, and he has a young fella living there with him. His name is Shane, mm. and it'd be all hours of the night, and Shane had heard the door opening and then closing, like yeah. the front door. And he'd, he'd shout down, he'd go, oh, is that you, Ed? Mm. And he'd hear no reply. Yeah. And he'd go in and he'd check in on Eddie, and Eddie's fast asleep. Mm. Yeah, and he hears the front door closing, opening and then closing, as in somebody just came in, or footsteps up the stairs. And they have uh, wind chimes. They have mm. wind, Shane has wind chimes in his yeah. room, I think. Mm. And he hears, he hears the fucking, and anytime something goes past it, they go fucking mad. Why the fuck did yeah. you get them in the room? Like, I don't know. Put in the like, room just in case walk, shit like walk, that happens. Everything. Yeah. He's like, he goes, a lot of the time I can feel like just a big gust of cold wind just walk past me okay. while I'm just lying there in my bed. That's mad. Mate, I'm going to be sleeping with the fucking light on tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I already sleep with, with the, the light on. on the telly off. I'm not messing. <laughs> I sleep with the telly on since I'm a child because I'm a, I know, I tried it last night. I goes, come here, man. I'm fucking, I'm... I'm a single man now. I have to fucking look up for myself and I have to take care of yeah. myself now. Yeah. Good. Yeah, fucking me. Good. So I'm lying there, right? And I, it was about four o'clock in the morning. I fell asleep at four last night. And I oh, go, man. This is ghost hours. This is ghost hour. Right? So I turned off to tell you and I lied there. But when I lied there, right? Didn't I, didn't I fucking blink an eyelid like that? And in the corner, like over here in the room, the way, do you know the way you, you have claws on? Oh, the it, looked, worst. it looked like there was someone just like this, Dane. Look. <laughs> just looking at me, like this, right? And I just, well, you I just done this <laughs> the remote and turned on, and then the light came on. And I goes, "It's gone. The ghost is gone." I'm 24, then, and I know for the rest of my life I'm going to be like that. And I'm no shame. I thought you seen. I thought you seen someone. You're like, no, mate. I'm all right. If I'm I right, if I right, blink the light and smell is like this, <laughs> just looking at me, I'm just gonna go. Ah. Yeah, my man. man. But that, that's like so that. But, um, that was the longest ghost story. Fucking in. Uh, oh. that was good. good I, fucking, I don't know how, man. Yeah. It literally, and even one of the lads, Dan, Dan mm. Boylan, a uh, good friend of mine, personal trainer. He, um, he literally just if he hears anything, he's up yeah. straight away. If he hears anything in the house, he's like, "What was that?" Yeah. And he's up straight away, and I'm just like, man, imagine that was like a bleeding ghost or something yeah, like that. Yeah, You're yeah. jumping up here. You're gonna try to throw a bleeding left hook to a ghost, eh? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, it's crazy, it's man. Mad, I don't man. know how. I have I to think, just say, I think, for... um, Dean, I, I come here. My podcast are only supposed to be a half an hour long, and I enjoyed Gosh. myself so much, and I got lost, man. It's about an hour, an hour and a half, almost two hours. <laughs> so, Shit, man, I'm sorry. man, it's it's been a really fucking good podcast, but. I have to fucking um, end this, right? So, yeah. um, I just, I just want to say, man, thanks. Like, I'll say no. this even off the recording. Thanks very much for coming on and and doing this because yeah, yeah. 
I know that before quarantine, you were fucking busy. You know what I mean? You're, you're setting up as you yeah. said, goals and stuff like that. And I've never really talked to you or met you. I know that we just share back and forth or something. If I was putting up a comedy sketch, you'd be like, oh, it's fucking love. deadly and stuff. And it, it's, you know what I mean? Like that. And I just, I just want to say thanks very much for that. And then thanks very much for coming on as well. Um, no problem at all. From the sounds of it, uh, you're a genuine guy and you're someone that if you can have a conversation with, you can bounce energy off. Do you get me? Because I, 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 I think of myself as a real fucking, all right, but, yeah. like, I'll go fucking, yeah. if I start getting, I think I have ADHD and I haven't fucking been tested for it. So if I oh, fucking mate, bounce off with yourself. Case, I can give you my t-shirt. Yeah. You can wear my AD, I have ADHD t-shirt. You can have it. I, 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 for someone like that, that has the same energy, I can fucking bounce off and I lose in the conversation. That's what happened today. Um, so I fucking really enjoyed this podcast. So thanks for coming on, as man. And, likes of that 100%. and i'd love to have you back on and when all this is over oh um we can when you're when you're going out and you're doing more stuff as well and um, i'd love to have you back on and talk more about that and then life after quarantine and you know how it's affecting so like that i'd love that but if there, before we go is there anything you'd want me to put in the description like instagram or anything like um <clears throat> No, just uh, the, the last thing I just want to say is just want to say I just want to say a big shout out to yourself as well. Mm. Do you know what I mean? As I said, like there wouldn't be much conversation, but the mutual support and the love is always there from both parties, mm. from yourself and yourself, and I just appreciate that. Mm. And seeing, I th- there's a lot of people here that that, that want to start doing things, but they kind of procrastinate with it, and that's that's one thing that I've noticed with you is that you don't really procrastinate anything that you want to do, mm. and that's major respect for you, and that's. Mm. It, that's a good trait to have, man. Yeah. You're a fucking, you're a gas, you know what I mean? And whatever you want, you go for it and you go do it and you idiot. don't do it with ears. Yeah. You, 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 you always aim for the head, man. Mm. But as I said, thank you so much for having me on. Uh, mm. <coughs> it's been an absolute pleasure. Yeah. Enjoy the rest deadly, of quarantine. Yeah, Enjoy the deadly. rest of quarantine. Yeah. Um, but as I said, man, thank you so much. And shout out to everybody who listened. Thank you for listening. Yeah. Uh, anybody that clicked on. Um, but much love Anthony have much yeah. love and respect for you and uh, we'll, we'll run it back we'll yeah, run yeah. it back and we'll good, do it man. again after quarantine yeah it'll be good <laughs> um, so guys thanks so much for watching another episode thanks, of guys. the podcast um, so remember it's not the best podcast but it's not the worst podcast just, it is the best podcast it's just an alright podcast on this guy. I just, I just, it's alright podcast so guys thanks for watching um, peace